Welcome everybody to Service Drive Revolution, the number one show in automotive. How are you doing, Jeremy O'Neill? The I'm doing, one and only. I'm doing great. Dude, that was like one of the best openings you've done in a long time. I give you a high five for that. We got a lot to talk about today, Jeremy. Yes, I hope do. you're ready. Did you I'm drink ready. your coffee or your monster or whatever? Are you Yeah, okay. Um I just held up so my coffee we cup got, for Chris, so. We got um we're gonna talk about the five landmines to avoid when reopening, which is crazy. Um we're gonna talk about will Corona have a second wave? We're gonna answer your questions and a couple comments that I thought were that were kind of cool. Uh, I want to go and through we're gonna, the we're reopening fit all protocol. This, we're gonna fit all this in into one show. It's it's lofty, so we better get right to business. Absolutely, let's get going. So this week we have our coaching, our virtual coaching. So usually we have a. For our coaching clients, we have a coaching meeting on the dealership side, usually in like Dallas or Chicago, Miami, somewhere in its couple days. And then we have an elite meeting, usually here in LA in our, in our office for our elite managers in the elite group. The elite managers are the ones that have the highest net to grow, CSI, they've won the, the advisor manager competition. And overall, just great guys, performers, but they don't want to sit in a meeting and talk about effective labor or menus anymore. So we have a little different kind of experience. But because of what's going on, I don't know if you heard, there's an epidemic, Jeremy. And travel well, yeah. is discouraged. You're, you're a dick if you travel. I've, I've heard about that. I've had things thrown at me at the airport, actually. People look at me weird just in the hall if I'm not wearing a mask. Just... <laughs> Yeah, but it's, dude, it's so different out in our area because, like, they lifted the order of mandatory face masks. So now people are coming to the shop with no face mask, nothing on, and they're walking up high five and hugging like it's normal. It's really strange. It's really weird right now. Has anybody walked up and tried to kiss you? A couple guys have, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that, the guys that drive catch... Volkswagen Jettas. The Jetta Not only can you get Corona, you can get herpes like that. Um, yeah, but what's so we're having like... a virtual coaching meeting. And it's exciting because we've got some speakers on the, on the meeting. So we, we right. have a coach, number one winningest coach in college baseball. He works for um, a professional team now for Jeter and the Tampa Bay Double Rays, I think they're called. Nice. We are going to have uh, Drew, who, who spoke at Top Dog, talking uh, about connecting with customers and leadership. We have um, John talking about leadership and sales. Um, our coaches are going to do some some things on, um, you know, innovation, what it takes to be elite, and, you know, overall just, you know, performance stuff. So it's going to be fun, but we're doing it all via Zoom. Everybody's going to come back into the office. We're going to open the office back up on Monday, and we're going to probably use the Service Drive Revolution set, which hasn't been used in a while. Wait, does that mean next week I get to come down to L.A.? If you want to, yeah. Oh my gosh, absolutely. We can um, do the show and actually maybe like toast each other. That would be really good. I will. I promise to disinfect before I come, come down. The, the protocols are kind of crazy. Have you read the protocols for reopening? I don't read stuff like that, sir. So your hours, first of all, your hours have to be modified for periodic deep cleaning of the facility. Are you doing that? We do that four times per day, yes. Deep cleaning, like you're getting behind that toolbox behind you? Yeah. Right Your version of deep cleaning might be different than mine. No, it's not. Um, I know you what have to a have a copy is. of the protocol on your front door. A copy? Says a copy of protocol is posted at public entrances. Wait, is this from LA County or is this statewide? LA County. That's why. That's why. Because like all the Out same people live in the, in the Inland Empire. It's like, hey, if you catch hey, I it, do. We'll, I do have a question. Uh, we're just though. gonna push you off a cliff. I have a question. I want to throw out to the audience if it's okay. If I want to get some feedback on this this week. So uh, they just um, are closing the submissions for Apex and SEMA this week. You know, so I uh, submitted some courses for that, which is going to be in November. But my question is, if we did a special live event in LA, how many people out there would actually travel to LA, get on a plane, come out for? a one or a two day class 
to get live classroom training. I'm just curious. Wait, hold on a second. Is Apex in um, in Vegas or LA? It's in Vegas. Then why are you saying LA? I was just saying if we did a class ourselves, not. But aren't we going to go to Apex? Yes, we're going to Apex. Okay, so first of all, the question should be how many people would come to a tequila and cigar party that you and I throw? Okay, then let's just leave it at that then. So, and then second of all, like if there's some like training or something like that, then that would be number two. But could we, I would it be okay? Tequila and cigar party. You would? Our, yeah. Our in-house I don't, Zoom hackers here. Zoom I don't hackers. drink or smoke, but it'd be fun to sit there in all the, in all the yuck. But uh, so I was going to let you guys know, I told a coronavirus joke the other day. You did. How did it go? <laughs> no one got it except the guy in the back, the old guy. There's got to be a better joke than that, Christian. Come on. Yeah. Well, he died laughing. <laughs> <laughs> we should put a drum roll on that because that took forever to hit. Have you, have you, <laughs> Jeremy, have you ever seen the, the Norm MacDonald um, moth joke that no, he did on Conan? No, I haven't that, seen that one. It's so much like Christian's style, like. He always gets me like I think like okay am I I don't get it am I dumb what and then boom there's a payoff it's so it's so funny so um, the question to the audience is how many people would join us for a cigar yeah and tell us party let us know Vegas. we'll, we'll start a little list so yeah. I submitted the thing to speak to like you told me to do good job so, so we'll see well I actually I didn't I think your sister did it for me but um, and I took your guys's advice I didn't submit six classes I submitted three. So our advice was one. I know, but I'm an overachiever. Yeah, but it, it um, well, okay, you do what you do. Well, there's no guarantee they're going to pick them all. So there's, and if they do pick them all, I can always say, well, I'm only going to do one. Pick one. Hey, you're Jeremy O'Neill. They're picking Jeremy O'Neill, not the subject. That's right. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I don't, we kind of are what we are. We're talking about the same stuff. Customer experience, profitability, like. The subjects are what we talk about, right? We're not going to, what are we going to go up there and talk about how to, um, how to make a pair of pajamas? Maybe face masks. You're getting screwed when you buy a name brand thread for your sewing machine. Like, what are we going to, we're talking yeah. about the same stuff everywhere we go. It's true. But except the only difference between me and you is you're talking about conspiracy theories a lot of times. And I'm, I'm maybe a little bit more towards the middle, a little more common sense. Like, Wait, did somebody tip you off to the secret CIA report that I found? It's about 15 years old. What? Out of There's no way that's 15 years old. That's in a modern day <laughs> envelope. Envelopes 15 years ago were lick them and stick them. No, they had plastic vinyl envelopes 15 no, years ago. No, they didn't. That yeah. thing's like you could... You could tow a trailer with that thing. That's actually um, my that's actually my payroll envelope, sir. Nice. Uh, you got me so far off track here. Uh, one more thing that I thought I wanted to pose a question to you because sometimes you come up with some pretty genius stuff. It says well, here you. in the in the um, public health order. Everyone who can carry out their work duties from home has, has been directed to do so. Could you, Jeremy, write service from home? Could I? Yes. Could you be a service advisor and communicate with your techs, write the repair order. Let's say you could dial in to the, whatever the DMS is. Could you communicate with your customers? Could you pet the dog? Could you get good explanations and manage your techs from home? Yes, you could. The technology is available today to actually do that. And we actually use technology just like that in our shop. In fact, I have actually done my job on an airplane flying back east and actually have sold work and communicated with customers on a plane. So could like it I be could done? Could it be done? Yes. Like is it going to be as effective as the way we do it now? No, and that's a whole topic I want to talk about today, which is, you know, what's happening. Yeah. Well, I feel like uh, I feel like I could I could too, but it wouldn't be as effective. But I could do it. Do you know what what number episode of Service Drive Revolution this is right now? I do not know, and I answered that. You think it's like number forty two, seventy three? Nice. What do you think it is? Uh, one hundred. 
No, but you're close. It's 99. Next, so next week next is week. the 100th episode. And we get to and go we in have the some surprises. We have some surprises on the next episode. And it would be great if you came in and we did it in person and had a drink, maybe popped a bottle of champagne. The 100th right. episode of Service Drive Revolution. Changing right. lives everywhere we go. Are you guys going to beef up the firewall for that? What firewall? Wait, are you planning on inviting your friends? Maybe. Everybody welcome our, ha our in-house Zoom hacker Christian back. Yeah, I, uh, I heard a good unemployment joke the other day. What's that? It didn't work. <laughs> that's the only reason I do these anymore, is just so I can come on and get his jokes. Yeah, that's funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know what you know what we did on on Friday, Jeremy? And I, I have to get you a copy of the video. I wish you would have been on there. Did we invite you to it? No. No. We didn't? Um, we should have. So you know, with the, with the coaches, because they've been home and they can't travel, every morning at 7, we've been meeting, and every week I've given them a different challenge, you know, in the, in the spirit of creating better content, serving our customers better, so we've gone through some things. And when we, had, when we um, hired Drew to do our upcoming coaching meeting, I said, hey, throw, throw in that he'll coach our coaches for, for a week and come on the morning thing. So he did. He had a week-long thing. And I, so we start Monday with the coaches. We do one hour a day for, for four days. And by Friday, every one of the coaches did a three minute stand up comedy routine. That's a long time. And bro, I'm not joking. It was drop dead hilarious. Like I'm talking about like some of our coaches are a little buttoned up, right? Right. They were, they were hilarious. Christian did it too. Um, I was going to do it, and then I got, I got lost because I was also taking another class at the same time, getting certified on interrogation, and that one was like really kind of pushing me, and I, I dropped the ball on the comedy, but uh, I wish I would have. I wish I wouldn't have been doing both at the same time because Drew did an amazing job coaching them up. That's it awesome. was hilarious. We were, we were rolling laughing. Um, so, yeah. So the hundredth episode of SDR, that was the point of that. That's cool. I'll be there. Do you ever read our comments on YouTube? Yes. You do? All the bad ones, yes. See now I'm trained in interrogation and I can tell that you're lying. No, Chris, I never read the comments on YouTube. I ignore that I'm Well ha <laughs> <laughs> Honda Guy. Sorry. Honda Guy uh said wait, do I want to read Honda Guy first? Which one? Well, first, David Munford said yesterday, so much great knowledge and so much great information for a somewhat new advisor. Everyone should listen to these guys if they're in the automotive industry. I thought that was sweet. That one's cool. We need a poster made out of that one. And then Honda Car Guy said yesterday, great show as always. Thanks for always getting my Mondays going right. You guys really need to do a funny political show. It would be hilarious. Now, I think when I read that, he's talking more about you. Why are you throwing me in on that? I have nothing well, to Well, because like a lot me. of people love online on YouTube, a lot of people love the conspiracy political stuff, which you kind of like, you, you're in, you got your foot in there in that water, you put your toe in. I think you, you would be funny. Well, we could make it happen. I'm, uh, I've got a lot of things going in the political world right now. Um, there's uh, the coup that we're starting to take over the White House very soon. Uh, if the Congress and our White House people don't turn things around. It's so funny to watch, you know, Trump's response to all of this when he created all of this. You know, and that report that I found, I'll unveil real soon of how Trump in a secret lab did actually create the coronavirus and the CIA helped him <laughs> push it out there. I, don't, I can't tell if you're serious or not. I have been hard working. Like my staff here at the shop is like, dude, where's Jeremy been? And I come in all haggard looking. It's, I'm on these midnight ops in these so, secret laboratories so trying to me, find this stuff. Let me get this straight. You're so far right. You think Trump is left. Correct. Yes. <laughs> Oh boy, it must be fun over there on the right. <laughs> it is. We even have a cracker barrel. Uh, do you think by. do you think Corona is going to have a second wave? 
Dude, I think right now we're in that tsunami effect. Like, it is the water's out. Everybody's running on the beach. People have let their guard down. Um, we have mitigated the spread of it, but it is not gone. And the challenge is it's not business. Like, so many people are just ready to just get out of the house and go. And I'm so afraid of what's coming, you know, with the second wave. It, it's this huge tsunami that's going to hit us. And, uh, you know, we feel it at home. Our kids are cooped up. They've been at home for, you know, six to eight weeks. We're trying to help with schoolwork and get things done. But I still have to work. My wife's still working. We're going camping this weekend. We're going camping the following weekend. And, like, people are out. And, you know, we're going to open things back up. So we'll see what happens. So it's a yes or no question. Do you think that there's going to be a second wave of the coronavirus? Uh, you were so different with this class you just took with interrogation. The answer is yes. You do think there's going to be a second wave. I and do. so do you think yes. they'll shut everything down again? Well, that depends on the government's ability to get the American public to accept the new taxation that they are unlawfully going to unleash on us because of all the stimulus money. Now, if they can pass it and get us to give another 30% of our income and live on government assistance forever and enslave us, then yes, they will shut down again because that will be the third tier where they take all of our income, all of our labor, all of the fruits of our labor will go to the government and then they will say that the American public has sold their souls for about $3,000 per month per family and that's what you get. And then guess what? The Trump-China connection will become reality. People will understand that America is no different than China where the government gives you a three bedroom, two bath house but you've got to give them 90 hours of labor every single week. So, hey, Jeremy, you know how you know how America is different than China? I, in many different ways, but not very. Not they in the eat dogs future. over there <sighs> and horses. Correct. Yeah. Well, my problem is they eat dogs. I would never eat a dog. Well, they do over there. So when you say America's like China, my mind shuts off. I I can't. We don't eat dogs here. It's a completely different world over there. Also, we're not communists. I, I don't disagree with that. We have some semblance of a republic left, but what is left is quickly being it's torn out. still of night hands. and day compared to what they have over there. It is still night, night and day. Night and day. And also, I got to think that there's enough redneck hillbillies like yourself that if things were to go too far left, you guys would revolt and, you know... We'd knock it all back into... I don't think there's enough of us left. It's no, generation you guys, after generation. You guys no. are the majority. No, we're not. No, we're not. The NRA numbers have been dwindling year after year after year. That's your first indicator right there if you need if you need an indicator. So, yes, do I think no, there's going to be a second know. wave of I coronavirus? That, I don't think the yes. NRA is the is the barometer of that. You know what? This this conversation reminds me of something. This episode of SDR is brought to you by Animal Crackers, convincing <laughs> children everywhere that all animals taste great. <laughs> uh, shout out to Michael. That's a... That's a, a Inspired by Michael. Okay, so we do think that there's going to be a second round of Corona. We we don't know if we think the economy is going to shut down again. I, I don't, think that I, I don't know how they could do it, but we'll yeah, see. I don't either. But it's happening right now in in Korea and Japan, right? So they're doing they're you know having to shut things down, kind of sort of again. So it's. You know what's interesting? I, now I'll just share. I had a customer uh, that we're working on their car, and he's a driver for FedEx, so all of that's being switched around. But his wife has been working from home for the past six weeks. Do you know what she told her boss? I refuse to come back in the office. I'm going to work from home from now on, and he can't fire her. So she. she what does she? Can, what does she do? I don't know. What she's clerical kind of office work, and she says she can do everything from home. It, but the reason that she likes is she gets an extra two and a half to three hours per day to her day. So she likes working from home. She says she's being more effective. And guess what? She says she's not going back into the office. So I'm curious how many people are actually going to draw the line and say, I'm going to work from home. I'm not going to actually come into the office. Yeah, but he can still lay her off. Like you can still downsize then. 
right? I'm yeah. sure there's an attorney in California that would love to take her case on. For on a layoff? T- for wrongful termination. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I don't know enough to get into that, but I would figure out a way. Yet another conspiracy that I brought to you. That's two in one I day. I love it. Yeah, wow. it's, it's great. Okay, let's go. Should we go to the voice of God and questions from, from our yes. listeners and viewers? God, are you there? The voice of God is here. How are you doing today, God? The voice of God is good today. How are you? Great. That's good. This first question comes from LinkedIn. Service department is always putting things to their policy when it is a customer issue or advisor didn't make proper notes and the vehicle comes back. This does include in marking down the parts to cost. Is this a normal practice or am I just giving in to allow this to happen? Shouldn't it be a cost plus 10 to 15 percent? I've been told that they don't want to pay for the part twice, which is why this is being marked down to cost. Don't get me wrong. I'm a firm believer in making the customer happy for repeat business, but this is aggravating because it affects my CP or RO. Chris, you want to handle this one? You want me to take it? I'm dying. I, I have an opinion, but I'm dying to know yours. Well, this is the story proverbial story of the doctors who are on a rafting trip and the doctors are by this beautiful river they're around the you know uh, the campfire having breakfast enjoying their coffee when all of a sudden a body comes floating down the river so the guys rush in they pull the body out and they start cpr and they revive the body and then two minutes later another body comes down and then another and before you know it, it's like the er like there's bodies on the shore they're you know doing cpr and these guys are working their tails off like they're sweating. They're like, man, we didn't came out for vacation not to work. All of a sudden, this one doctor in the middle of all this gets up and just walks away. And like his buddy's like, hey, George, where are you going? Get back here. Like, you got to help us save these bodies. And George says, nope, I'm going to go find the guy throwing the bodies in the river and stop this madness. And that's the same thing. The problem that you have here is it's not what management does with the comeback. It's not what they're selling the parts for. It's not what they're making you mark things down with. It's the fact that service advisor error is creating this problem. So if you forget to write things on the ticket or you rush or you're worried about the CP number and you're not genuinely concerned in taking care of the customer and documenting their concern properly, petting the dog right, writing the ticket up right the first time, you're creating this issue and it doesn't matter what management does, the 10 or 15% markup is irrelevant if you do your job right in the beginning. Yeah, I don't, I dropped the mic. That was great. I love that story. Thank you. It's perfect. You're focused on the wrong thing, basically. Yes, absolutely. Now, one thing about the story too that is a little incongruent is we're paying for the part twice. <clears throat> doesn't make I mean, sense. No, it doesn't. I mean, that would be, be, it would be under parts warranty. That would be the parts department fault. <laughs> yeah, that would be under parts warranty unless you're buying your parts from some backwoods. Like, but if you're buying them from a parts department, they're going to be under warranty. So uh, that doesn't make, that part doesn't make sense. But I love your analogy. I agree 100%. The other thing I would say is whether you mark up policy and things you're writing off or you do it at cost, the net at the end of the day is the same. You're just, I agree. You're just raising your prices to charge yourself more. If you like seeing the bigger number, then that's fine. It, you know, you could make a case that it's the true representation of, of what it is. You're going to sell it to yourself at retail and not at cost. But at the end of the day, your profit's the same. If you write it off, whether you write it off at cost or you write it off at the full amount, it's still coming out. You're not making any more money on the bottom line. No, and you know, Chris, I think the one thing, if you want massive CP numbers, what you have to do as an advisor is get more key throwers, right? And you have to turn the tide. Instead of your dealership losing 70 to 80% of your client base to the independent world, flip those numbers, do something every day to make to be memorable, to be remarkable, and make customers want to stay with you as their trusted advisor so they come back, right? Let's flip the yeah. tide. If you had key throwers and you flip those tables, it doesn't matter what they do. Your CP numbers would skyrocket. 
I agree. What's the next um, question, God? This next question comes from Roger in Florida. Good morning, Chris and crew. I work at an extremely busy Toyota dealership in Southwest Stop Florida. bragging, Roger. Stop bragging, Roger. If I'm aggressive enough, I can easily clear 20 ROs a day. I've noticed that when I try to grab every car on the drive, my ELR suffers. But we are way too busy to spend an hour or more with each customer. I'm trying to find a balance of numbers of cars written per hour versus keeping my dollars per high. I finished last month at roughly $265 per copy, and I'm looking to increase that number. Thank you for your time. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Less is more? Is that what you're thinking, Jeremy? Uh, well, no, I'm thinking that you shouldn't have to spend an hour with each customer. I mean, what we teach with Penny the Dog isn't an hour walk around. You know, it's, you got to get No, efficient. but, but it's, um, it's definitely 15 minutes, right? It's not, it's not, a, it's not just like a, a I, you know, I have a, I, a recent scenario with uh, somebody who was arrested and got a public defender. Guess how long a public defender in Los Angeles spends with their average client. So let's say this person's accused of a drug deal, murder, whatever. C crimes that they can go to jail for, for 10, 20, 30 years. Three minutes. Six. <laughs> six minutes? Are you serious? The average public defender spends six minutes on it. Now, does he go to them or do they bring the, the alleged or the charged person to the defender? Oh, I don't Are you know like in a works. cafeteria line with your tray? <laughs> it's like, sit down next. I think they just get the case assigned to them. They do it. They meet with them and they go in front of the judge. Oh, but it's wow. a short conversation. But they That's spend brutal. like six minutes in preparation for something that could cost you your life. Like you could be innocent. Or let's say that even if you're not innocent, I think the one thing that we we hold true as a country is that you get a fair trial, right? For now. <laughs> Just saying. Well, that's the, that's Just the hope, right? throwing that out there. So I think le less is more. Like for me, I would rather connect with two or three customers on a deeper level and create a key thrower and have an a, a higher average per ticket than write 20 plus ROs. I was never good past 20. Man, I, I, I would um I would struggle a lot. I, my number was like thirty five. Like when I'm I hit so happy. I'm so happy for what is about to happen right now. Come on in, Lorraine. Okay. <laughs> She's got the goods. I got the goods. She's got the goods. No, any police following you or anything? No, Can I have no. them over here? Oh yeah, sure. Sorry. <laughs> you weren't followed. I was not followed. Maybe for a second, but sorry. Awesome. Thank you so I much. Know, we got the goods, Jeremy. So Chris uh, just received a bag with uh, it's red yeah, a bag for our you're, listeners, you're and he's, he's the the noise you hear is him reaching into the bag. His right eyebrow just arched. So, um, it's exactly what it should be. Face. Are you gonna unveil it? No. Are you gonna unveil this now, or is this for like later? Well, they're illegal. Oh, okay, cool, awesome. It's illegal. What's in this bag, Jeremy? So should we talk about the bag or should we talk about the question? What's the next? Well, do you have anything to add to that? I, I do. I think, you know, with technology, oh man, the, I see where you're going. Uh, that, I empathize with him a lot because with more cars comes more opportunity. And obviously the rewards are obviously a larger paycheck. So I completely get that. The desire to serve is also there. So use technology to get through the process faster, I would have a pre-appointment email and a text that I sent out to every customer. I'd preload as much of the stuff as I could before they show up so I could shorten my transaction time. I'd learn to pet the dog virtually before the customer even showed up so I could cut my transaction time down. So I would say start to harness technology to shorten your transaction time per customer. And if you're smart, you could double your numbers. You could literally have a four to six hundred dollar average repair order instead of two sixty five. Good. You have another one, God. The voice of God has another question. This question comes from YouTube. 
Hey, Chris, when you talk about pet the dog on the drive, what do you do if your repair facility isn't set up in a way where you can walk around the vehicle with the customer? Uh, that's a good question, God. Uh, it's weird to say good job, God. I've, I've never seen, seen it. I've heard about it. I've had people tell me that they have a, a facility that they can't walk around with customers. But when I've gone there, I've never seen it. Customers are pulling into a parking spot somewhere. Like you don't have to have a traditional drive in order to walk around with a customer. You just designate certain parking spots that that's where customers pull into. And then you go out there and do it. And if it's 40 below outside, then you don't do it during that time. But eight months out of the year, you can do it. Well, the interesting part of this too is go, you're going to have to walk the car anyways, take pictures and come back and pet the dog, you know, virtually with the customer at your desk. I mean, keep in mind, Chris, you always talk about this. It's not about the vehicle. It's about the customer and the relationship, right? So it's not necessarily about the car. It's about the person. So what can you take out of that walk around experience and uh, bring it back in and pet the dog virtually at your desk if you have to? Yeah, and, and just, you know, Christian and, and the team have spent a lot of time working on how do you go pick up cars and have the same experience. And so you can pet the dog by calling beforehand and talking about it. And then let's say the car's delivered to you. So the, the real scenario is if, if a, a valet or somebody goes and picks up the car and brings it to you, what are you doing? Are you calling beforehand and petting the dog, then telling them, hey, I got the car, I walked around, this is what I saw and this is what the computer says you're due for or you know there's a way to do it but i've never seen a facility although i've been told and people swear oh our facility our facility it's different here you don't understand um the only the only thing that i've ever seen that comes close is that it's you know 40 below outside and the winds are going 60 miles an hour yeah i don't i don't know that you want to do a walk around outside then that right. happens in Sudbury, Canada. I have no idea where that's at. I was asked that question once. You do a walk around on every car? Yes, every car, every time. Well, I'm in Southern California. This one guy in the back room says, you ever been to Sudbury? I said, I have no idea where that's at. He says, when it's 40 below, you go outside. I'm not going outside. Hey, uh, yeah, well, so that, Chris, even the Even the tone of that, though, is like kind of like, come on. It's about the customer. It's not about us. You we're know, not, there's a, we're there's not trying a, to make you do anything. We're trying the, to get you to love and want to take care of your customers. You've heard of The Matrix, right? The movie? Well, these, no, the real thing, The Matrix. I've actually never really seen The Matrix movie. Okay, but anyways, there's this like hidden wall, right? And this is what a lot of advisors struggle with. They're so focused on the transaction that they stay on the transactional side of this wall. But everything that they want is just on the other side of the wall. I like where you're going with this. Which is the relationship, right? And... When you're talking about the car, the my Suburban is, is the vehicle. But what really gets me as a consumer is like if my service advisor that I took my Suburban to knew that opening day at Snow Summit Bike Park was next Friday and all of a sudden I got like a gift card for gas, like a 7-Eleven gift card for 20 bucks. Hey, Good luck. Be safe on Friday. I hear opening day is going down because he paid attention to what I do with my family, with the car. So I would challenge all my advisors to do this. Find three things that the customer does with that vehicle that's personal. Go beyond the transaction. Get into relationship with the customer. And when you have those things, now you can build a real life CRM database that you can mine and create those key throwers that we want. Right. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, totally. Stop being stubborn. It's not about Jeremy and I. It's about how do, how do we serve our customers? Exactly. You're in the wrong job. If you're if you're not trying to sharpen your your skill set that you're worried about, how can I better communicate? How can I better serve? How can I create a better customer experience? And it's not about them. You probably should should go work at the DMV or, or, T um, or TSA. TSA. Yeah. So I heard the TSA had the well, record number in like a month of the passengers they screened. It was 5% of their normal capacity. 
And they still were rude. <laughs> you think they'd be serving everybody coffee, right? And crumpets. Jeez, yeah, really, right? Or it's tea and crumpets, I think. <laughs> Who knows? Well, you're really enjoying the new stuff you got there. The contraband. I've been told that this one, this tri it's a Trinidad. I've been told it's really good. I'll, t I'll, I'll tell you here as we go. If you're um, listening to the podcast, you've got to just basically v go to YouTube and watch the video. Chris just showed you the label of the cigar that he has. Which it's a Trinidad v Vigia. Vigia. Nice. But how would you pronounce that, Jeremy? Vigia. Vigia. Hey, okay. God, do you have another question? No, God only had three questions. God has another question. Yes, right. I love it. I guess I underestimated God. Hey, do Never you know how you underestimate God? <laughs> do you know how you give God a high five? How? He's everywhere. Just like that. Done. Jeremy, so if you're listening and you're not watching, Jeremy just did a thing like the princess in the parade. I did not do that. I would, moving on. God, what's, what's your question? The, what's question four? The next question is, hey, I love the podcast and all the great info you guys give. One thing I miss is the book report. My question is, what good books do you recommend for training? Are you reading any books, Jeremy? Yeah, I'm reading uh, Syndicate right now. Uh, two or one? Syndicate shop on a rough draft. We're working on that. Oh, you're working on a... Uh, so Syndicate is a book series that I started to write. Uh, it's a, a novel of a kid who inherits a bunch of breweries and then has to turn them around. Mm -hmm. I'm reading um, this, The Ellipsis Manual. Oof. Ant Analysts and Engineering of Human Behavior by Chase Hughes. Oh, interesting. It's dense. Like it takes like it's one of those books where you read a part and think about it and read it again and think about it. But he's amazing. Hey, so what's your number one training book that you like? What do you mean by training book? Well, that's what do you have any books that you'd recommend for training was God's question. Well, so training our, our, for what? To be a service plumber? advisor. What? Service oh, advisors. Yeah. Millionaire you... service advisor. Yes. Read, read that. Or read that. the irreplaceable service manager. That's but a good Chris, one. I've read that. I read that two years ago. Should they go back and reread it? Yeah, it's still relevant. Do you know? Do you know that I get more out of a book the third, fourth, and fifth time that I read it than the first time? Yeah, me too. Absolutely. It, it's so. How many? How many times have you read How to Win Friends and Influence People? Like twenty-three. Yeah, I, I like to, every I, time. You're like, man, this is so good. I do a lot of uh, group readings with that where we'll take a, a small group that we're training and then we do a chapter a week and go through it and then discuss it. That's a great way to do it. So Yeah, that's a great one. Absolutely. So uh, the book we would recommend, The Millionaire Service Advisor. Get back through it. Irreplaceable Service Manager. That's it. Okay. Thanks, God. Man, awesome job, God. High five. Oh. I'm really happy with God. Thank you. God is happy with you as well, my child. <laughs> my child. God's, God's, I'm old enough to be your dad, God. <laughs> um, okay. Now we're going to go to the, the real content of the show. A list that you came up with that I think is genius. Oh, thank you. Five landmines to avoid when reopening your service department or shop five landmines to avoid number one too aggressive aggressiveness yeah do you know what happened to me this week so remember a few weeks ago i had a client that wanted to buy a car this is right at the beginning of the shutdown and i had the car picked out for her. we went online i even had the stock number for the dealer we contacted them and they told us what no, I can't sell you a car. We're closed. Well, that customer went and bought another car at another dealership, literally 200 miles away. Guess who's been blowing up my phone for the past day? That dealership? That dealership. They didn't leave a voicemail. They called me four different times 
and I could see the caller ID that it was them, and it irritated me almost to the point of breaking my relationship where I don't want to talk to them, and I can be a great source of business for them. So my message is this, as you come back and you have all this pent up energy and you want to be aggressive and you want to call people and you want to just get all this stuff going, slow it down. Be strategic and remember, Chris, what's the first thing that we should be focused on? Should we be focused on our sales goal or should we be focused on how we can help our customer? Serving the customer. That's what business is all about. Absolutely. So solving a problem for the customer. Dude, that's great. How many problems do customers have right now? A lot. A lot of them are going to say, well, I don't need my car because I'm not really driving. But you do need your car properly maintained and ready to go because you don't know when you're going to need it. So let's get ahead of that curve. There's a lot of problems that we can solve. We can be very creative and strategic. So I would say think through what you want to do. Don't just go into activity and be aggressive. Let's be a little bit more strategic and be helpful. That's good. So that's number one. Number two, the tsunami syndrome. That, do you feel where we're at right now with all this, with what's going on? Like a lot of people are letting their guard down. You, you know what happens when a tsunami comes. What happens right before the tsunami hits? Where does all the water go? Out. Out. And what are people doing? And it's calm. Yeah, it's calm, right? So people are out running on the beach like, wow, I'd never noticed the tide was this low before. Little do they know that the second wave or the big tsunami wave is coming. And I think that's where we're at. So we can't let our guard down and go back to normal. I think as advisors, we need to do a better job of stepping up our game of disinfecting the car, doing our part with, you know, wearing our, our mask, being prepared, washing our hands, wearing gloves, but protect the customer's car. Use floor mats, use seat covers, use the steering wheel cover. This is a great, you, you know, what's funny is we just talked about not being able to pet the dog. You want to know where you can really hit a home run with customers with petting the dog? Do that in the beginning. Ask them if there's any area of their car that they want special attention to. Show them that you're putting the seat mat in, the floor, the seat cover, the seat, the floor mat, and the steering wheel cover. And then when they pick up their car, what do you do? You walk them to their car and you take all that stuff out, make sure it smells nice and clean. And then, you know, you can do like a no contact high five. So there's a yeah. lot of things we could do right now. So make don't get the narrative. Garden. Make customer yeah. safety and, and safety of everybody around you the narrative. Yes. People will be attracted to that. Yeah. So now's not the time to let your guard down. Just because it's calm and things appear to be normal, there is still stuff coming we got to be prepared for. Yeah. And also, I think it's it's important to, to be the company, the person, the service drive, that even though, like Jeremy said, it's calm and the water's out and it looks like the tide's low, when it comes back, when there, if there's another flare up and it comes back, you are the company that was safe through the whole thing and protected everybody and didn't get caught slipping. Absolutely. Because they'll remember forever if you got them sick. (laughs) Yes, they will. For sure. (laughs) You don't want to be the one in the news like, hey, uh, yeah, we traced all, we traced these hundred people getting Corona back to you, Jeremy Motors service drive, right? It's not what we want. No, my friend Chris Cloutier in uh, Dallas, Texas says, you don't want to be the shop that gave them COVID. You do not want to be that shop. Man, this cigar is incredible. I don't think it was oversold. It's really smooth. Oh, save me one for next week. It makes me want some tequila. Yeah, we'll smoke one on the 100th episode. All right, I'm totally down. down And it's little too, so it's not a huge commitment. Number four, reestablish your systems. So you're a big systems guy, right? You love systems. I mean, the best businesses have really good systems and processes in place. Now's the time to reevaluate your systems and make sure that you have really good rock solid systems built. And there's never been a time in human history that has been better for reinventing yourself. So right now, look at your systems, find ways to get better, faster, connect at a deeper level, but just go back through and revisit your systems. You know, one of the things I did the other day, I took out a post, I went to the store and I bought poster board and some pencils and I was having some really deep frustration here at the shop and I drew out my org chart and I just wrote down, you know, who's responsible for what. It really helped me see where our systems were failing and we were able to create new systems out of that and make the business better. So from a 
uh, shop owner, service manager perspective, you can do that. But from a service advisor, Chris, how would you look at your systems and building better systems for a service advisor? The, the thing about systems that you, that you kind of want to understand is that it's a feedback loop. And so what you have inside of a system is a process of doing things. And then you have the outcome of that process. So let's say I, I used to think about this when I was an advisor, the way that it was set up in our drive was we had these, um, 2995 oil changes on Cadillacs or, and if it, it was 30 minutes or it's free. And so the, the thing with the way the process worked is all the oil changes, the 30 minutes or it's free coupons were put into advisor 99. And then all of those were divided between all the advisors. So it affected your hours per row bonus. It, if, you know, it, if the thing was for the other advisors, is if they left it in 99, they kind of like had this weird thing like, oh, it doesn't affect me because it's in 99. But those numbers were divided up and calculated into your into your numbers, right? So I, I, w I thought about that as a, as a feedback loop, a system. So we're marketing and we get lots of customers coming in off of this because 30 minutes or it's free. And so the 30 minutes started when we wrote the RO because sometimes we'd have lines out, you know, out to the street. But like, so now what, what happens when I greet the customer and I write the RO, the clock's ticking, right? And what's the process? What are the steps? That, that sort of thing. So when I would give it to the quick lube techs and they would give it back, there, were, there, were never, there was never anything written on the inspection sheet because they weren't vested in it. They didn't care. They, they didn't really have any, there was no upside for them to recommend work. The whole thing they were thinking about is I'm going to get in trouble if this isn't done in 30 minutes, cause they would get yelled at and they would get in trouble if we had to give one away. Right. So their yeah. priority isn't inspecting the car. Right. So what I would do is I'm like, well, they're not, not only are they not vested in inspecting the car, they, uh, they don't really care. Who cares? Well, my team leader, Todd cared. So I would ask Todd, I would say, Todd, whenever I get one, I'm, I'm going to, point at it, you're going to go inspect it. So I got my team leader to come over and inspect, you know, anyone that had 30 plus thousand miles on it that, you know, needed to be inspected. And just that little change in the process, because I looked at it as a feedback loop. And I looked at like, I'm riding oil changes and there's no work to sell. And these cars are leaving here. And I know they have a hundred thousand miles on them and they need work but they're going to come in on a tow truck when we could tell them now. Now, do you think customers, when they get an oil change done and three days later they break down because a belt breaks or something happens, do you think that they blame us? Oh, absolutely. My car was just Yeah, in we were shop. just in you, there. Right, they don't yeah. know. They don't know the difference between <clears throat> a quick lube tech and a team leader. Like it's, they don't care. They know that they were inconvenienced late for work and now their car's broken and we were just in there a couple days ago. Right? right. So all of this is a feedback loop, right? The feedback is I had a couple of those. I didn't have a lot, but I had a couple of customers that were like, Hey, you just worked on it and now it's broken. And the cars have their high mileage, their older cars. A lot of our customers who are riding Cadillac in Washington state, a lot of our customers were snowbirds. So they'd go to Phoenix or Palm Springs in the winter. So their cars would sit for a long time. So belts, tires, things like that, you know, would, would, um, would decay. So that's, I always looked at that as a system and a feedback loop. And the, the important elements are to understand that there's a process that you can document. Like Jeremy was saying, there's an org chart, there's a process. And if you document that process, like I, I was doing on paper, I was like, okay, it's 30 minutes free. I got the quick loop tech. Oh, well the quick loop tech isn't really vested in the inspection. And you look at the outcome of your actions. That's the feedback loop, right? The outcome of what we're doing, the process. And is the outcome what we want? Well, the outcome wasn't what I wanted. I was just riding all these, these oil changes and nothing, you know, not selling anything. And then the customers were upset that they left and, and something broke. So that's how I would approach it as an advisor is I would look at everything you do as a process 
and as a feedback loop and as the outcome of that process, what you want. If you're writing 25 customers a day and you're taking shortcuts, step back and look at that process. Well, maybe I would make more friends. I would take better care of my customers. We'd have better retention here in our little service drive if I didn't write 25 and I only wrote 15. That's a feedback loop. Or just think of your numbers if you could continue doing 25 and double your numbers. Yeah. That is a feedback loop. So it's loop. a feedback loop, right? A system is a feedback it loop. It is. Absolutely. I bet if you went back and tracked your numbers at that Cadillac dealership, the, the faster you got the inspection of the customer, the more they bought. So if I can get my inspection done in 15 minutes and we're ma was making a presentation while they finished the oil change versus 30 minutes, there's a big difference. Are you psychic? In, yeah, absolutely. I'm not joking. So the, the quick loop uh, techs were right next to me. Right. They were right across the drive from me because it was an inside drive. Uh -huh. And I literally, when, when my team leader Todd would go over and inspect it, if there was stuff, I would just walk the customer over and show them on the car. Perfect. The oil change hadn't this is a, been this started. This is a chapter in, in the book I'm writing, I Lead You Follow. Nice. The Dharma of Leadership. Awesome. Feedback loops, systems. Perfect, awesome. So that's number three. Reevaluate your systems right now. Make sure that you update and refresh them. Quattro, senor, is numero quattro. That was number, number four. Number three was uh, customer first. Oh, did we talk about that? Maybe we skipped it. I think we skipped it. So, hey, this is 3A, 3B, or 4. What are you all? What is it? Customer first? Yeah, put the customer first. Okay, what, they all know that. Come on, why do we have this on the list here? So what was, was number one? my one? idea? Are you making fun of my idea? No, I'm just throwing a rhetorical question at you. Well, number one was harness the aggressiveness, right? Control aggressiveness. Yeah, control aggressiveness. Now, customer number first. I'm sorry, do you want to recap real quick? Number yeah, number quick. one is control aggressiveness. Number two, tsunami syndrome. Number three, customer first. Number four, reestablish your systems. And number five... Drum roll, Wait, no, 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 no. You can't go there yet. We didn't talk about number three. Oh, number five so good. But hold on. But let's just give them a quick 30-second blib on customer first. You can't put your sales goal first. Put the customer first, helping and finding a way to be a problem solver, and you'll see how that Forget works. Forget about the customer. About. It's all about you. Take care of yourself. No, put the customer you'll first. Always, you'll, you'll always be busy if you worry about yourself. Come on, go read that vinyl record in the corner that Zig, Zig, Zig Ziglar wrote about what? Help enough people get what they want and you will get what you want. So there you go. Put the customer first. What's number five? Have fun. Have fun. Absolutely. You have to have fun, right? A little levity. Understand that it is what it is. We can only control what we can control. So have some fun in the process. Make, go out of your way to make your, your fellow employees, your customers day. Be, have a mindset of service and have fun. Don't be so buttoned up. Let loose a little bit, for sure. I think you could work on that, Jeremy. I feel like you're a little buttoned up. Feeling a little aggro today. It's okay. I'll let the negativity wash off me. I'll if be good. If you stopped watching all that conspiracy Trump stuff, you might. Dude, I don't watch it. I write it. I am the creator of it. There's I don't know what that means. It means I don't just sit at home and watch Netflix. That's all. <laughs> Not Netflix. You're you're listening to that weird internet radio that you can only get on the internet because YouTube and everybody banned it. I'm their ghostwriter. I write for them. What do you think so of you know. Alex Jones? Who? Alex Jones. Drawing a blank here. Too far left for you. Too far left for me. Yeah. Alex Jones is too far left for you. Yep. I don't. I'm telling. You, I don't listen to the radio or anything like that. Okay. Well, I think this was this was a fun episode. I did too. It's good. Next episode is our hundredth episode. We have some surprises in store for you. You will not want to miss. Do not miss it. Couple a couple surprise guests. I gotta get back to work, so I'm putting my mask on. So there we go. We're ready to go. We'll see you next time on Service Drive Revolution. Thanks for watching this episode of Service Drive Revolution. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post new episodes. I'm Chris Collins and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Chris Bulldog Collins. And I'll see you again on the next episode.